Welcome back to Prax 320. We are going to be going through a sweep this week from scratch. So there's no start file here. We're going to be doing a sketch and then a sweep. This is what we're sketching or what we're modeling here. Um, this is a real thing that I have. It's an M10 Allen key. Uh, the goal here is to do it with as many, or sorry, as few, <laughs> as few, not SOLIDWORKS, as few features as possible and as efficiently as we can. Uh, we're going to learn something about Fusion while we do this. Uh, so first, going to set up the system uh, that's going to generate our parts and then fiddle it into uh, its final configuration. So let's start with a sketch uh, on the ZY plane. It might not, depending on your sentence, might rotate around to show you. And we're going to begin by sketching in the center line of this guy. So goes out about 175. Well, not quite actually. Goes into a curve first. And um, again, however you want to do this, uh, like you can go for a tendency, escape out of that, and then put the correct uh, constraints on there dimension and I'm going to say that that's 175 that'll resize for my data panel and also gonna, I know what this diameter is I measured this 20 now this is an m10 sorry a 10 mil 10 millimeter allen key uh, I am going to go ahead here and create a parameter so you can see here I'm unsaved. Should fix that up here soon. My user parameter, I'm just gonna call base 10. Uh, base size of key. Say okay. You can actually go in here and adjust these things. So instead of, for example, this radial dimension is not 20, it could be base. Start typing, it shows up times two no change but now we're running on the base same up here it's a bit arbitrary here but we could say here base times 17.5 we're now running off of the base size perfect we can use base from here on always keep in mind it's 10. so next dimension from there from either from this top edge or from the origin, base times five. Perfect, finish the sketch. Call that my profile. No, I'm gonna call this the path, not the profile. I'm gonna make a new sketch because even though it's possible, you can kind of do it on oh, picked in a way what we're doing here is good a good error it's actually on the same plane because i was still in that previous sketch so it just puts it over the top when i say new sketch finish the sketch right click on it redefine sketch plane turn on the origin pick the front zx plane say okay we don't have anything in the sketch so it won't change anything this sketch is our profile Nice. Edit the profile. Can hide the origin here. It's a hex drive or Allen key. So here we're going to have a hexagon. So we're going to look for a polygon. Uh, edge is not what we want. Inscribed or circumscribed. We don't have a circle for either one, so it doesn't matter. So I'll just use the inscribed. You'll notice you can switch here as well after the fact. And I'm going to lock on to the origin and give it, uh, I'm going to try and keep it a little bit under control here. So I want the top edge to be horizontal. So let's go ahead and do that while we're at it. And how big is it? We don't know. We want to use a sketch to drive the size of this. That's the sort of key taking at the start of this video. Uh, when we're doing sweeps, 
we want the profile to be as much controlled by the the paths as we can so finish the sketch let's do a little test see if we can pull it we can't pull it that way which means it won't rotate because it's horizontal but we can definitely pull it size wise you'll see an active length here so that works fine so we do have a locked path and a yet to be constrained profile let's do a test sweep so sweep what's it asking for single path profile path okay so the profile is what we're after and that's the hex path is our center line here and there we go perpendicular orientation new body all that stuff looks fine we can have analysis turned on if we wish to see check the curvature but for us with this one straightforward to say okay our prototype is set up if we show our sketches we can for example drag this around a bit and it should update accordingly that looks good so everything's working let's try dragging it really big gonna try and jam this corner here see if we can get fusion to crash I don't know just fold it nice so nice robust uh, model so far so next step is to give it a path to follow on the outside in if we have a look at the thing the feature itself which we're going to reuse of course uh, we have single path and guide rail or guide surface it's quite hard to see these but you can kind of get a feel for what's going on so we we're not going to have a guide surface on this guy we're probably going to go for this guide rail yeah so we need a guide rail the temptation is to make a new sketch it turns out fusion doesn't care if it's all in one sketch so let's go ahead and edit our first sketch again easy way to get started is just to do an offset uh, if you notice chain selection is toggled on it doesn't matter where we pick you'll see a uh, grip or movable handle arrives right now you can see we're going negative so I'm going to say negative base that's not right that's too big because we're at the half we're in the midpoint here this is the midpoint of the allen key so it's base divided by two negative to say okay to that little kind of sub dialog in there still fully defined and keep in mind that we still have our profile ahead in the history so that looks good now What's going on at the front? Let's have a look at our other part here. This is our, we have to deal with this stuff. You can see the origin here. There's this going on. How do we do that? So we have to adjust this sketch. So what we're going to do here is get in here and do some detailed uh, modeling. Uh, we can use the uh, line tool for this uh, and just drag uh, kind of up towards I am actually going to delete this line that I'm using to get started so I'm going to start somewhere over here click up I want to be aligned with this when I start this again this is not making a constraint it's just lining up my sketch so it works out well one curve pull off another one snaps that one to the top edge nice if you wish just go in here and delete this guy I'm gonna make these two equal to begin with parallel equal so let's make these equally sized so that means the radius is the same and we're just gonna carefully pull this into place first this is actually a tangent to this line up here so we pull it up close looks good escape out of that and start arranging things to fully constrain them let's lock that to the front first this is going to become our 
top of hexagon. Makes sense. There we go. So that's our top of our hexagon is going to be constrained to that. And as far as I can tell, when I was measuring this guy, uh, and I did my best, this center is on the center of the tool. So then when we put this tangent, we should see everything going well. Now, again, because of the way I was measuring it, I don't know what this what this radius actually was. So the only way I could figure out how to construct it correctly, or one approach to all this sort of stuff, is to put an, a point up in here. For me, it's a point. I put it in my sketch shortcuts, but it's a point. Point, put it on the arc, snap it on, and then give it a horizontal vertical constraint to the center of the arc. This measurement now can start dimensioning is and it's quite it, I checked all my Allen keys. It seems to be base divided by two, which would put it right up at the top. So we don't want that with a uh, minus one, which gives us a controlled four. Next, we can actually do a little check here. So what is this radius? Driven, yeah, because this will over define it if we divide, if we define it again, because of course we made this tangent. So what's missing here? What can we still move? One way of finding out is to look for open ends, this white end, or just start dragging things around. Uh, right. So this looks fairly well controlled. This is basically, what is this distance here? Now, as far as I could tell by, again, measuring various of these guys, it's actually a third of the base. That locks it down back to fully constrained. Is a machinist going to give you a kick if you ask for 3.333 repeating? Yes. Um, what we're going to do here is use a very particular formula to get this sorted out. So this is quite convoluted. So we're going to finish this sketch and save the part here first. So let's save uh, for me, Command S, or for you, Control S, if you're on the, on the PC. And we'll just call this the 10 millimeter, or not 100, 10 millimeter Allen Ball Plus, which is what it's called. And I'll put 2023 on there. Al. Allen. Now, uh, let's get this a little sorted out before we start fiddling with this end here. So again, let's edit our second sketch, which is our profile. Let's see if we can just do a constraint. No, we can't pick it. Maybe we can. Yes, we can. Nice. Now, why is it not fully constrained? because this is a little picky, because it's not in the middle. Let's undo that. Try it. It's actually undoing my attempt at drags. So this time, let's go for project. The point, the end of our rail. Say okay to that, and then put a midpoint, and we'll see if we can do this. Ah, nice. So even though it's more or less locked, by its horizontality and the previous one, it's not fully defined until we put it in the middle of the top face, of the top edge, sorry, of the hexagon. Perfect. Let's see what that does for our part. 
Right. So we're not following the edge yet. Keep it in mind, we're gonna keep the fixing of this dimension in our back pocket. Let's just get this prototype working properly. Let's adjust our sweep. So we're gonna change from single path to guide rail. Profile selected still, path is selected still, that's our middle. Guide rail, let's select that. Well, that works. Well, hold on. I can't pick the rest of the path. So what do we do? Let's cancel that. I'm gonna edit this. We're almost to the point where we can fix that uh, dimension, but we're still fiddling with this. So I'll have to get things right. As we have learned in this class up until now, Sometimes, often we would like this whiskery type sketch to stay. Uh, like, so for example, this is tangent and it's very obvious what it's tangent to and all these things. This is one of the few times where we have to split the line for sweeps. So split, no. What is the, what is the break? Uh, there it is. So it's a break. Now, if we hover over the line we want to break, it'll show us where it's going to break. I don't want to. I don't want these double breaks here at each where it touches. I would prefer it to be just at one end. What if I break this whole side? That seems to work. So I only get one break. Nice. This is important. What it's saying here: constraints and/or dimensions removed during the operation. So let's make sure that we understand what just changed. Aha, this end suddenly became open or unconstrained. So that's important. So everything else looks okay. Let's go in here. So down at this end, that looks good. Still unconstrained. Anywhere else? Oh. Try this one as well. Nice. Now, what I want to do is use this path and then transfer over to this one. The easiest way to make sure that that is more likely to happen, how about that? We'll turn that into a construction line. We lose our profile, but now we can see maybe we can actually switch across. Let's finish the sketch and see if we can fix that. So one more time, guide rail. I'm gonna turn off chain select because I want to just pick them myself. So this guy and that. Oh, nice, then we're getting there. Perfect. That looks good. So, We've got our whole thing here with two sketches and one sweep. The only thing we have to fix is that dimension. Let's turn on our path dimensions. That's three and a third. Again, a machinist is gonna laugh at it when we ask for three and a third millimeters. So we need to fix that. Gonna show that so we can see it, keep an eye on it. And we're going to adjust parameters here. There's our basis. The grayed out five is the inspection dimension. This guy right here in the brackets, same brackets. So how do we fix this? It's this third, three and a third thing here. Now, there is a whole bunch of math features in here inside of Fusion. We're going to try doing something here. Uh, there is a thing called rounding. So what if I just round that? Now we have to put it in brackets. Round the expression. Uh, it rounds it to the nearest full unit. What if I want it to be, for example, to the nearest the tenth 
of a millimeter. Actually, I have to adjust. There's no way to, no easy way anyway, that I know of to change its decimal places. However, you can kind of force it to do that by multiplying the base divided times 10 divided by three, then divide the whole thing by 10 again. That's not right, divide. Oh, nice. 3.3, .3, that's reasonable. What if I wanted to two decimal places? 100 divided by 100. 3.33. Let's go for 10. Nice. There we go. Uh, that is actually, as far as I can tell, again, measuring as closely as I can, that's as close as I was able to get it to uh, the real part. It seemed to be three point, well, 6.6 .6 across the flat, two thirds of D. Since we're going in a kind of a radius, that's it for us. So there's our part, all the whole thing with two sketches in one sweep. Nice. Uh, there are ways to do this in one sketch. Uh, we'll get to that later in the semester. But for now, this is our optimal solution. And let's make sure that we know the weight of this guy. No, sorry, not the weight, the volume. So again, right click at the top level. We only have one uh, body here in our whole assembly files. So it's just that properties. Not sticking it down. Here. So we've got that selected correctly. Again, if we have the incorrect selection to select the top level, manage we're not using right now, physical, the volume is what I'm after. Um, there's quite a lot of digits here, maybe overly accurate. Let's change our units at the end just to get the volume that we would like. Uh, I'm gonna change from millimeter to centimeter. Ask for the properties again. Or did you go there yet? Uh, manage, don't need that right now. And the volume is what we're after. Our volume comes out to, just write this down, 18.546. Nope, yep, 18.546 cubic centimeters. Show that in your PDF to show that everything's went swimmingly. And there we go. That's our finished part. Over to you and we'll see you in class.